Good afternoon, uh, traders, subscribers, and followers. Uh, this is AJ. I'm going to present today's uh, pre-market um, trades we did in the morning session, and what we've been trading most of the day. Um, I have to say, I was pretty. It was really nice that when we walked in this morning, I saw the Dow down about 70, 80 points. And the first thing I told uh, pretty much everyone in the chat room as we started the morning in pre-market, and then we opened up the opening bell was to watch their long positions on uh, most of their stocks after mid-afternoon because this, I felt the market would probably fade off and probably see the Dow hit around 300, possibly 350, and the Dow, Dow did hit down over 306 by noon, which was really cool. Um, and it's, it's knowledge like that that really can help a trader not get tied up or get twisted on a trade, especially if they're longing it. Um, this morning's action was just really great. The earnings have been coming out this morning and this whole week they have been just nothing but giving us gifts and abilities to trade a lot of uh, a lot of range plays and a lot of a lot of just a great plays and today was a perfect example was yelp right at the open and um but today we traded uh, on pre-market list every morning i get up four o'clock i live in the west coast in beverly hills and so i do um a pre-market an analyst report for every member of awesomecallstrading.com. And I get up and I research and I do the homework. And this morning I, I picked uh, SLS, Swear, Natra, Fenco, Hertz, um, uh, DBX, Yelp, uh, Activision, uh, TDD, SWKS, Netflix, NVIDIA, and Roku. Okay. So I'm going to go over about five or six of these and kind of go. We'll start with the, uh, the simple one, SLS. Uh, this was just basically fluff news, and in the news there was um, some wording that I saw in the stock, and the stock was gapping up. As you can see, it was gapping up on the news pre-market, uh, roughly in the 230s, 240s. After I read the news, um, I put a note out in the stock to, uh, in the in the pre-market notes, to go ahead and short the stock, and as you can see. I made it very clear in the morning right here. Uh, this is gapping up 60 cents. Any pop at the open, this is garbage. Take the stock down to $1.95 and under. And that's because we have a lot of short sellers in the room. They load up on size on their platforms. They can get 5, 10, you know, 15,000 shares, whatever is available. Uh, they'll request them. And as you can clearly see, the stock actually ended up at $1.90. So it was a nice trade. Um, as you can see here, um, in the first hour, 90 minutes, it had hit a buck 95 right there. So, right before I went on break. So, if you had taken, you know, 5,000 shares, 6,000 shares, 4,000 shares, you made a pretty decent money on that. So, it was a good trade. Okay. Uh, next trade that we did was Yelp. Now, Yelp, uh, as you, everyone knows, and if you don't know, um, Yelp had horrible earnings and uh, horrible guidance, and they just dropped off a cliff. This is what you call a cliff dive, and there was just no bottom. <laughs> so um, I made the decision, and uh, I actually gave this on Twitter for free live uh, this morning, at, and I took a position myself at uh, $29.98. Yelp was our number um, seventh pick, because seven is my lucky number, AJ Trader 7. So, uh, gapping down to 13, um, anything below 30 is a buy, and the stock should pop um, at the open. Um, I was hoping a little bit more, uh, like four points, but uh, we settled at two, so I was very proud of the trade, and, um, and the main focus was to have the entire chat room just really enjoy the short covering squeeze at the open, and that's really what that was about. So, as you can see on the opening bell, Ding, 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 and the short and the stock squeezed all the way up in a matter of, jeez, probably you can time it from the bottom right there, 15, 20, 30 minutes. Within 25 minutes, the stock had already hit $32 a share. It was a wonderful trade. And if you had bought $30 and under, you had a nice average, it just skyrocketed. Nice two-point trade. The next trade we had was S. W 
KS. This was a really, 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 really nice trade. And the way we set this one up this morning was um, earnings were not good. If you heard the uh, read the report, which I did in the morning, and hence that's why the pull down. But I figured that shorts were going to probably cover the opening on this gap down. See the gap down at 77 right here? I figured they would probably pop and probably cover to 80. So I want you to look how I wrote it up for every member in the chat room. And this was item number nine. Um, I would like. I would like stock gap be down six. I like to see a small pop at the open to 79 plus, and then short the stock down to 73. So the main focus was to short the stock at 79 plus. As soon as 79 came, boom, you're all over it. And I want you to see how that trade worked out. So we come over here, and we pop it, and guess what? $79.89. And so we got some short covering. And then we pulled it, and the stock hit seventy-five dollars. So it was a wonderful four-point trade to the downside, and really well executed in the chat room. The next call that we had was TTD. This was okay. This be this be across the board. Okay, it beat um, on on Rev. It beat on, <laughs> you know, you just name it. They had amazing uh, guidance. I mean, they were off the hook. But for whatever reason, the stock sold off. So I was begging for the stock to pull to 100 again. Because yesterday, it pulled to 100. So I told everyone in the chat room, you can take some, I believe, at 106, 105. But if it goes to 100, you've got to load up. The analysts were saying to buy the weakness. And I have to give credit to PSK, Jason in the room. Those of you uh, that uh, follow him, it, uh, this gentleman uh, on Twitter, um, he actually made a comment yesterday uh, on his Twitter feed. And I'll show you his comment because this was his trade today uh, right here. So you can see how excited he is right there, TDD. But last night, um, before he uh, went to bed, he made a comment on Twitter that he did not understand um, no clue why this was down so he I knew right then and there he was going to be all over the stock and sure enough he bought 500 shares pretty much at the open it was a great great trade by PSK and uh, I'll show you the stock and I'll show you the pre-market notes we're right here uh, TDD gapping down I would take some um, have room to 105 to add and look for the stock to hit five to seven points to the upside or more. If this stock goes to 100, buy, buy, buy even more. Um, the stock was sitting, I believe, at uh, 106 or 107 this morning. And I just wanted a, a nice pop for seven points out of the gate. And if it pulled 100, please buy more. And if you look at it, the stock just really just ripped. Um, it went from 107 all the way in just a matter of a couple minutes to 123. So, so uh, there's no words. <laughs> there's no words to describe. It just gave a great opportunity. And if you knew what to do, and you shouldn't had to be afraid of it. And I was really impressed with how PSK just entered the trade, confidence, and just he just nailed it. And he was excited. So, uh, the next trade that we want to talk about is a stock called Natra. Now, uh, Natra is uh, just a basic earnings call. And in the earnings reports, if you read them, they really kind of really break down, you know, their guidance, their revenue, what they missed, what they didn't miss, and so forth. I read these reports, and I made a decision that Natra should not be down. Uh, five dollars a share it should actually probably gap fill probably to eighteen dollars a share so um, What I started telling traders to do in pre-market was try to get a position and then add on weakness and look for the stock to hit 18 and I'll show you how I worded it. It was item number I believe this one was number uh, Natra Gapping down four dollars and sixty three cents um, I like to pop this to 17 50 to 18 if this pulls to 15 go long um, so 
I already had taken a position around 16 and I added it below 15. So I had a nice average and when it hit 18, it was payday. And I was very clear on this. Um, I even said in my pre-market notes, I was sitting on the ask to get filled at 16. And so I just added on weakness because I always take a starter when I trade. And everyone knew that. And uh, so I want you to see how it worked out. So here's the 16 order fill. And ding, 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 ding. It pulled, popped, fat fingered. I added around 1460 or something it was and had a nice average. And you could see how it popped all the way to 18 on a short covering. Just like we wrote it up. Textbook. It was a wonderful trade. Everyone could have um, got excited about that one. Um, the next trade was, I believe, uh, was it Hertz? I think I had Hertz down here. Uh, so this is Natra. Let me write that down. Natra. And let me go to the list here. And see, I had quite a few of them. I had Hertz. Uh, 1750, yeah, that's fine from 21, right? Uh, the next one was Finco. Finco was a really good one. Right here on Finco, this one was another, another earnings play, but what's different about Natra on this one was I figured it would fade off after the initial pop. Um, I was more on the short side of it, but I wanted to pop first and I wanted traders to get in there and short it because their report wasn't very impressive. And therefore, I felt uh, very strongly that the stock would probably end up popping and fading. Now, where it would pop, I said, uh, look at a pop at the open towards uh, 17, possibly 18.50 for covers, and then fade it all day. The more it pops toward 18.50, you want to get in there and short it for an all-day fader right there. So I'm going to take you to Finko. And I'm going to show you how it got all set up for everybody in the chat room. As you can see, it was gapping down right here and even here. And then in the morning, it was gapping down. So what I figured is that we would probably get a pop at the open on Finco towards 1850 and then a fader. So as you can see, the stock ding, 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 opening bell, 1850. It actually hit 1860. So I apologize. Again, I have to predetermine all of this in writing before the market even opens. So... <laughs> You know, hey, I missed it by a dime. Let me know where you want it FedExed. And then I said the stock would just sell off. And there it goes, $15. So nice three and a half point fade. If you took 1,000 shares, you made 3,500 bucks. If you took 500 shares, you made 1,500 bucks. Okay, so that was uh, Finco. Uh, the next trade that was presented to the traders in the Awesome Calls trading was a stock called Dropbox. Now, Dropbox, I felt any pop at the open would probably be a fade, and I wanted to really just uh, gap fill Dropbox. And the reason is, is because Dropbox tends to have a lot of bag holders that hold the stock for quite a while. So if you look at the last 20 days, these are bag holders. When you have bag holders that are way below the price here, okay, I, again, I have to, this is your time, uh, moderators in other chat rooms that own chat rooms that copy us, this is your time to learn something so you can sound smart in front of your people. You see this? These are bag holders. Okay, so on a stock like Dropbox, they're known for, to get rid. Write that down so you can sound smart on your next quarter in front of all your people. Pretend that you know. But in our room, we already knew that this would all get sold off, and we would just gap fill it. And that's what I was looking for. So if you look at the pre-market notes, uh, stock was right here, Dropbox. Gapping up, $3. Um, if it pops even more at the open, that's great. But take the stock down to twenty five fifty and under. And I figured it, that's where it would probably just come down and get smashed. All right? Because, uh, again, you have nothing but bag holders holding the stock. They want to cash out. And uh, so let's take a ding, 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 ding. Opening bell right here. I was hoping for a bigger pop. But at the end of the day, we just shorted the stock. And we were going for 25.50 and under. Here's 25.50 and under. So the drop box turned out to be a nice, nice trade there. Okay. Six, Okay, so those are the seven trades we're going to go over today. Bottom line is, if you were in Awesome Calls trading today, not only would you have been educated on each of these trades on how to do the setups, what to look for, but I also would have made a fortune. And, uh, you know, in this room, it's <clears throat> we really take pride in determining what the stock would do 
where it's going to go before it hits there, where to exit the stock, and what to look for. And that's why traders from all over the world continue to come in here to give us a shot because, one, they never had anyone go out of their way and actually write a written report. And a lot of these uh, chat room owners out there don't spend the hours involved. And I believe that very strongly. The more I can educate a trader in here, the more he can fish and find for himself. And that's what's important when you're trading and day trading is to develop your own skills. And that's really important that I try to teach each and every individual. As you know, there's been about seven or eight chat rooms that came from our room. They all learned it from here. I take pride in that because, you know, this is the place to learn. This is the place to be something really special because we are special in here. So anyway, I want you to enjoy your weekend. I hope that um, you learned a little bit and I hope you enjoyed it. And I look forward to training you on Monday. And uh, if you like this webinar, please retweet it. And, uh, and I will see you all on Monday morning. And just, uh, again, my Twitter feed is uh, AJTrader7. And uh, this is me. And I am AwesomeCallsTrading.com. All right. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.